Now sitting here with K-State offensive lineman Hadley Panzer. Uh, you're sitting here, one of the veterans on the offensive line, which is going to experience a lot of turnover. But I think a lot of people outside of K-State has mistaken the turnover for a lack of experience and talent. How do you feel about your unit right now going into the season? Uh, I mean, I agree with you. There are people have been saying that we lack experience or that we're young. I mean, you really look at it like we have a lot of guys that have played a lot of football, you know, and as whether it's, you know, Carver Willis started, you know, how many ever games last year. Um, and then, you know, we got guys as far as like Sam Hecht, Andrew Lion Gang um, that have gotten game reps and, and they know what that's like, you know, so it's not a it's not a lack of uh, being young or, or not old enough. Um, it's just a matter of going out there and putting it on the field now, you know, so I'm excited. Um, I'm, I think we got a really close group. And I feel like that's what you have to have um, in a team is a really cl- uh, is a really tight uh, offensive line unit, and I think that's what we got. I think we I think you guys have shown that off the last two seasons where there's been so much consistency there, and even if there were maybe times where people would look and say, "Yeah, you know, do you want to get this guy on the field because he's so talented?" But I, you don't want to mess with that chemistry. You seem to be getting there. How has Easton Kilty transferring in kind of played into that since he's been here the least amount of time with all you guys? Right, and, and I know some people would say, you know, coming from, you know, an FCS uh, a program, um, but they've played a lot of Division One uh, teams. You know, I, I believe he was on the team when they played Nebraska. I think they mm-hmm. almost beat him, uh, you know, in, a couple years ago. Um, so he knows what, what's going on. And, uh, you know, it's good for him to be there um, in the spring, um, get a spring ball playing next to him, communicating with him, and just – and it's, it's a lot of carryover for him. I mean, he's, he's not um, dropped the ball at all as far as learning our offense because we do a lot of stuff, you know, and he's done a really good job. And, uh, and I think it just comes with more time. You know, we start fall camp here in, a, in about three weeks and stuff, and it's, that's where we're, we'll get to rolling on it, you know. So uh, Losing all those seniors from last year's team and especially on the offensive line, what's it like being the older statesman of, of the room now? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. Um, you know, as far as I was the younger guy, you know, mm-hmm. but I've been there for three years. But you got, you know, Hayden Gill and Cooper Beebe, Duffy and, and, and Katori up there that are going into their sixth year. And they're the older guys, you know. So um, I found myself, you know, a couple of times where maybe I hadn't or wouldn't speak up um, before because of the, there's older guys that they had a voice. And now it's like trying to f- figure out. Um, okay, like when something isn't going right, that you have to be the one to speak up, if that makes sense. And so that's a, that's the biggest thing that I'm, I'm working on right now. And nobody's perfect. I'm not perfect, you know. So um, I'm, I'm gonna continue to work on that. Uh, what's the biggest difference in blocking for a quarterback like Will Howard compared to a quarterback like Avery Johnson? It's, it's no different. I mean, I think you got to go out there and, and do your job. You know, I mean, it, obviously. Um, they're two different players with two different skill sets. You know, I mean, I'm not saying that one's better than the other, you know, because they're both great dudes and, they're, you know, very close friends of mine um, right now. And, and uh, so I, for me, it's no different. I just go out there and do my job, you know. Thinking about some of the other changes that are going on for you guys right now, Matt or Connor Riley, Matt Wells are here now. And with Coach Riley kind of sharing the offensive coordinator role, has that changed in any way for how he interacts with you guys as your offensive line coach? Um, I can see where people would, would think that, you know, but for us, uh, there's there's nothing different for us. Has it made it you easier know? for you guys to have the OC be somebody that truly understands you? Uh, I mean, I, <laughs> I, I see where you're saying there, you know, whereas like, uh, you know, with the offensive line coach being the, the coordinator, we're like, okay, let's run the ball more. Like, just mm-hmm. as an offensive line, let's run the ball. You know, but it's, it's, not, like, it's not like that. You know, it, I think we come in there with the same mindset that nothing changes. You know, that whether, whoever's um, was calling the plays, you know, with, with CK last year and then we got Coach Riley at, in the bowl game, it didn't matter to us as an offensive line. We gotta, like I said, we got to go out there and still do our job. Who we talked a lot about the experience and you know guys that were considered young like you and some of your other teammates that you know one year later not much has changed but now you're the old guys and everybody's expected. Who are some of the younger guys that are up and coming that you see? Man, this this guy he's got shades of you know maybe somebody like you or some of the other guys that were right there waiting and able to take advantage of opportunities. Right, um, like I said, Andrew Langang. I know he's not a young guy, but I mean he's he's we've been there pretty much. I've been there a semester longer than him, you know, but I'm just saying he, I'm, he's not a young guy, but he's coming along really good, very good player. Um, John Pastore is is someone that I believe um, is going to be a very good player. I mean, just a, his size 
He's smart. He's athletic. He's going to be a very good player. And then, uh, you know, Michael Capria, he's coming along very good um, at the center spot, you know, and just playing just very smart football. And I think that's that's good for him, just playing the, like a center position. you got to know what's going on. And he's handled that very well. Um, you know, as far as new guys coming in, um, you know, uh, Navarro, Chunky, has been a very good um, uh, guy so far coming in. He's picked up things very, very quick. Um, and he, he's wanting to learn and wanting to ask questions. And that's, that's for everybody. You know, I'm not just singling him out, you know, but everybody has done a very good job of, of uh, being, in, um, you know, putting, a, I guess, what, what's the word I'm looking for? They're, they're wanting to come up and they're wanting to learn, you mm -hmm. know, uh, what the offense is so that there is no carryover whenever we get to fall camp. Uh, another new uh, coach involved at K-State right now is Drew Little back at K-State. Yep. So what, what's the acclimation been like for him and having him back at K-State? It's, it's, it's very cool. And, like, when I was getting recruited, um, he was at Kansas State still before he, he had left. And, and I talked to him a couple times, you know, at, at uh, high school camps that I'd came to. And then I believe he was, he was still at Kansas State for maybe a week and a half, maybe two weeks when I got there. And, and uh, so it's still kind of like figuring out, you know, who, like who I am, who he is, you know, getting to know him. But then um, I, and he's came back a couple times and I've been able to interact with him and meet him and talk to him more. Um, but ever since he's been back, it's, it's helped me so much because of he has an offensive line background, you know, and so I can always go up to him and bounce ideas off of him and, and just talk to it. And, and uh, but yeah, I love Drew. He's, he's been really good. Uh, so another just kind of a fun question. Uh, you got to play EA Sports College 25 earlier. So yep. what? What was that like, and what, what was your favorite part, and what, what's the first thing that you'll do when you fire up the game? <laughs> uh, I think the, the first thing I'll do, I, I feel like a lot of people will do, is go bump up their ratings. <laughs> you know, I think that's probably one thing that everybody's going to do, but um, the game is very realistic, and we it was just we played uh, K-State versus K-State, you know, and, and uh, just how real the stadium is was it was just it was very cool and very uh, I'm excited for it what, what uniform did you use well I was I was watching them but uh, uh watching Avery and Mott play uh, I can't remember I think Avery did all white and, so the white uh, helmets and pants are in the game I believe so yeah. okay that's going to be exciting for people to hear oh yeah uh did you go and look at your rating uh I did, or did, did yes. you have to say hey can you check to see what I'm I did yeah I don't know if I want to share that though <laughs> okay okay well then no, I, we'll just we'll just let everybody know that when they get the game next week to make sure and go bump up Halley Panthers yep. rating to a yep. more accurate state uh one other not as serious football question are you the best dressed K-Stater here today <sighs> no I don't think so I think Marquis Siegel is he's sitting right over there I think the mm, purple yeah purple and purple and it's not a lavender. It's not a, just a um, you know bright purple. It's that kind of nice mellow purple with the with the lavender tie. I think that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, this was bad timing for you to sit down <laughs> with him right there. Uh, yeah, because I was going to give it to you, and then yeah, yeah now I, I see the the, the completion. Yeah. So yeah, it looks uh, looks like it's going there. Uh, in terms of kind of everything that's gone on with with stability I guess for you guys for the most part at K-State because so many other schools have this turnover and you've lost a coordinator you've lost whatever but Connor Riley's been there through it all and then you also have all these teammates that have stuck around why is it that K-State has had so much consistency since you've been there I think it just goes back to the type of people that we have in uh, in our program you know and it starts from the coaches all the way down to the players and I think you can have consistency um, like we've had when you have a, a level of a, a high level of love that we have for each other. And um, I think that's the biggest thing is, I mean, everybody, nobody's out there just to get their own. You know, everybody's there for each other and we're there as a team, you know, and I think that's the biggest thing. And I think that's what we we do differently than most places. And I'll say that with confidence, you know. So Media Days used to be in Arlington. Now it's in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you guys are kind of just in a get in, get out type of situation. Yep. Is that disappointing you? Would you have wanted to explore a little bit more? Or is this your first time here? This is my first time in Vegas, and uh, I, I think I'm glad we're not staying. <laughs> you know, I think, I think uh, for one, it's hot. Outside. The heat I mean, is we're, miserable. We're in here in the cool, but I know whenever we get out of here to leave, it's going to be hot. Yeah. You know, 
um, and then also I can uh, save my money. You know, I think that's the biggest thing. I was going to say, yeah, you probably don't want to lose your NIL money yeah, here, yeah. here in Vegas. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's, I mean, those, those are all good points. Now, in terms of getting to experience everything with media days, because it's, it's always interesting for first-year players that are getting to come here and see it all, what has been early on the most surprising thing to you? Um, I don't really know anything, like, just surprising. Um, I just, the stadium is just surprising, the first time being here. Um, it, I was kind of talking to Avery and stuff that it kind of feels like uh, Dallas stadium, obviously not as high, but it has that kind of modern feel to it. And so I think that's been the biggest surprise for me. And But, um, yeah, it's very, very nice here, yeah. Uh, so what's one thing in the off season that you've been working on uh, in improving your game? Um, as far as um, I, I, you can say it's part of the game, but being a, a good leader, um, has been the biggest thing that I've I've been working on, and uh, you know you can't you can't push anybody um, unless they trust you. You know, so building that trust with the guys, and uh, I'm there for anybody on the team. You know, I'm a, I'm gonna be there, and, and uh, I'm the type of guy that's gonna venture out, and I'm gonna go hang out with the running backs. I'm gonna go hang out with the DBs, or I'm gonna go hang out with the linebackers. You know, obviously I ain't like that when it, when we get on the field. You know, so <laughs> but um, you know building relationships with the guys because. Um, and, and building that trust so if they have something um, come up that they can come up and talk to me, you know, because I'm there for them. All right, so Manhattan, things that you do around there when it's not football related and you're hanging mm -hmm. out with guys. We know that fishing and golf seem to be popular options. What is it yeah. that you like to get out and do? Um, I, I would agree with fishing and golf. Um, there's that, uh, maybe you guys can tell me, where's that sinker's at? Do you know what I'm talking about, the putt-putt deal? I I don't know. I mean, I yeah, I, I haven't I haven't Have lived in Manhattan it? for uh, like four years at this point, okay. I guess. So yeah, well, I want to I want to try to go get get some of the guys and go to that. I mean, I think yeah, just a putt putt golf would be a lot yeah. of fun. You can hang out and get get a couple laughs out of some guys. Yeah, no doubt about that. All right, well, uh, anything else that you you want people to know about K State football in twenty twenty four before we let you go? Uh, we're going to be a, a very uh, well disciplined team. Um, we're going to play together and we're playing for each other um, and uh, like I said we have a lot of love for each other and I'm, I'm excited for this year and like I said everybody starts out 0-0 zero zero, and uh, anybody can beat anybody so I'm, I'm looking forward to this year. Awesome, thanks for the time. Yep, thank you guys.